Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be diving into the world of AWS VPC. Now VPC, it stands for Virtual Private Cloud and this is one of the very important service that we have in AWS and this is something that uh, we use with almost all the other services like EC2, RDS. So anywhere network is involved, VPC is something that we will definitely end up using. So if you are gearing up for an interview or you're just eager to expand your knowledge on cloud networking, then you're in the right place. So in this particular session, we will be looking at 10 common uh, interview questions that you can expect as part of your AWS VPC. Now, the first question that we have is, what is Amazon VPC and why is it used? So very basic question. So understanding the whole concept of your VPC. So VPC, like I said, it stands for Virtual Private Cloud. And this is basically a service that allows us to launch our AWS uh, resources in a logically isolated section in the AWS cloud. So if you want to create a isolated section in the cloud uh, so that your resources do not talk with um, services in a different network, we can make use of your VPC. For example, uh, launching an EC2 instance, launching a RDS database in an, an, in an isolated section, we can make use of your VPC for that. So this particular service, it provides us a great control over your virtual networking environment, including your IP address string. So by using this service, you can define uh, what IP address range you want, uh, how many subnets you want, your routings, which makes it ideal for creating uh, private and secure networks in the cloud. So basically, if you want to create your own custom networks with your own uh, IP address range, your own routings, your own private network, we can make use of your VPC for that. The next question we have is, what is the significance of CIDR notation in VPC? Now, CIDR, it stands for classless interdomain routing. And this simply defines your IP address range in the VPC. So whenever we are creating our VPC, we need to define our range. Uh, so let me see. Uh, okay, so here you can see this IPv4 CIDR. So this is basically your classless interdomain routing, which is basically your range of IP addresses that you want. So something like 10.0.0.0 slash 24, which gives you 256 IP addresses. So defining that range is basically your CIDR ranges. So this allows us to specify a range of IP addresses using a combination of an IP address and a subnet mask, for example. 10.0.0.0 slash 16 represents a VPC with a range of IP address from 10.0.0.0.0 to 10.0.255.255. So this is basically the range of IP addresses that uh, we need. So you can define that by making use of your CIDR. We can we also call this as a CIDR. Basically, that's your IP address range. Moving on to the next question, how are subnets? used in amazon vpc now um, subnet is one of your component of your vpc so subnets in amazon vpc is used whenever you want to divide your ip address range into smaller segments so whatever the range that we are going to define over here so if you want to divide that into smaller segments we call that as your subnets all right so these subnets are again your subnetworks inside the VPC, it's a subnetwork which is again an isolated section that we are creating. Now, each subnet, uh, we must be creating this in a specific availability zones, right? And resources launched in a subnet are bound to that availability zone. So, whenever we are creating our subnets, uh, we'll need to define the so let me select the VPC just for sake of example, you'll need to specify the availability zone. All right, so your subnets are availability zone specific, and these are again like a sub network we are creating inside the VPC, whatever the VPC that we have selected. So, subnets enable the isolation of resources and helps in designing highly available and fault tolerant architecture. So, subnets are again your isolation networks that you're creating inside the VPC. 
So whenever we're launching our instances or the database, we'll need to specify in which subnet, uh, in which availability zone we want to create the resources. And that way your resources are isolated. So let's say for example, the instance is running in this subnet and in this subnet, these are two isolated resources that we are running. And this enables us to make our resources highly available and also fault tolerant. The next question we have is, what is the purpose of a VPC's main route table? The route table is a very important component of your VPC. And uh, uh, this basically allows us to do all the routing. For example, you know, from let's say subnet A, where the traffic should go. Like let's say it should go to subnet X. Likewise, you know, uh, where the traffic should be routed. So let's say, you know, the traffic, traffic is coming from a load balancer or the traffic is coming from a uh, um, XYZ subnet, that routing is done by your route table. So we can define that in your route tables. So here you should be able to see, these are some example route tables I have created. So if I go over here, you can go to these routes, you can edit this and you can start adding your ranges. So you know basically um, uh, which range you wanna accept and then where you wanna send it. All right, you can define that as well. So this routing is done by your route tables. So it controls the traffic leaving the subnets and is a convenient way to manage the default routing behavior for resources in the VPC. So without this route table, uh, your VPC will not be able to process your traffic. So this route table plays a very important role uh, in your VPC. So this is what accepts the traffic and sends it to the respective subnets that you have defined moving on to the next question uh, how does network address translation which is a nat work in a vpc so uh, when we talk about your gateways in vpcs we have uh, two types we have the nat gateway and then uh, we have your internet gateway all right so your nat gateway is used whenever uh, you want to give internet access to your instances running in the private subnet. So basically, uh, when you want to give internet access to your private instances, we make use of your NAT gateway. So NAT gateway helps you to give internet access to your private instances. So this uh, allows you to initiate outbound traffic to the internet, but preventing inbound traffic reaching those instances. So with your NAT gateway, you get only one way traffic that is from the instance to the internet uh, you won't give any internet access from the internet to the instance so it's only your outbound traffic that you are allowing so nat gateway is used to give internet access to the instances running in the private subnet so by default um, the instances which are running in the private subnet do not get internet access and if you want to give internet access to your instances running in the private subnet we make use of your nat gateway for that the next question we have is explain the difference between a vpc peering connection and a vpn connection now vpc peering is allowed used uh, whenever you want to um, enable the communication between two vpcs so by default your VPCs are isolated. For example, here if you see, in my case, I have two VPCs. Now by default, these two VPCs are isolated. So whatever the resources I launch in this VPC and in this VPCs, they cannot communicate with each other by default. However, if you want to enable the communication between these two VPCs, we can make use of your VPC peering for that. So VPC peering allows the communication of two VPCs, enabling them to communicate as if they are part of the same network so it will start behaving as if both these vpcs are within the same network and the traffic will start flowing between these two vpcs that's your vpc peering the vpn connection on the other hand is used when you want to establish a communication between your on-premise data center and your vpc so basically between your aws environment and your on-premise environment if you want to establish the connectivity between them, we can make use of your VPN connections for that. The next question we have is, what is an elastic IP address and when would you use it in a VPC? So elastic IP, it's mainly used when you want to have a static 
IPv4 address which can be used for dynamic cloud computing. So at any point when you want to have a fixed public IPv4 address we can make use of your elastic IPs for that. So in a VPC an elastic IP can be associated with an EC2 instance providing a persistent public IP address that remains the same even if the instance is stopped or started. So by default um, when you launch your instances in a public subnet you get a public IP however that public IP is available as long as the instance is running. If you stop the instance and start it once again the IP will be lost. Now if you want to keep your IP persistent you'll make use of your elastic IPs which gives you a persistent public IP address which does not depend on the state of your instance. So even if you stop the instance or you start the instance, the IP address would remain the same. So elastic IPs are often used for scenarios requiring a fixed public IP. So when you want to have a static public IP such as um, hosting a website or an application where you need a static IP address, you can go with your elastic IPs in that case. Moving on to the next question, how can you secure communication between instances in a VPC. So here we are talking about your security. Now in VPC, whenever we talk about your security, we have two main components. We have the security groups and we have the NACLs, your NACLs, which is your network access control list. So we can use this to control your um, traffic or to secure your um, uh, VPC. So you have your NACLs and you have your security groups. Now your security groups are stateful and it operates at the instance level and your NACLs are stateless and it operates at the subnet level. So uh, whenever you're creating your security groups, you associate it with your individual instances, your NACLs you associate it at the subnet level. So any instances within the subnet, the NACLs will be applicable to all those instances. Now here stateful means by default your um, security group if you look at the outbound rule by default you'll have your all traffic allowed that's default that's your stateful so you will uh, you'll get the inbound traffic by default the outbound traffic is allowed but your NACLs are stateless that means the outbound traffic you'll have to explicitly specify if not the outbound traffic will not be processed. The next question we have is what is a VPC endpoint and why would you use it? Now VPC endpoints can be used when you want to create a private um, internet connectivity. So a VPC endpoint allows instances in your VPC to communicate with other um, AWS services without traversing the internet. So basically without giving the internet access outside AWS, we can give your uh, instances access, the internet access to access the other AWS services, but only within the AWS environment. The traffic will not go outside the AWS environment. So basically you get a private internet connectivity. So this provides you with a secure and uh, private um, internet connectivity so for example let's say you want to access your s3 service or you want to access your dynamo db service you would still need internet access now one way we can give um, internet internet access to your private instances is by making use of your nat gateway but what your nat gateway does is it gives you the internet access it also gives you the internet access outside aws However, now let's say you don't want that. You don't want the internet access outside AWS. You want it only within AWS. That's where we can make use of your VPC endpoint. So it gives you a secure and private internet access. And this helps you to improve the performance of your uh, network and your security. And this uh, also helps you to reduce the security risks, the overall security risks of your networking component. The last question that we have is how do you troubleshoot the connectivity issues in a vpc so there are different different ways that you can troubleshoot um, any networking issues with your vpc so you can check your security groups your uh, nacls your subnet configurations your out tables all those things you'll need to validate so you'll need to see if you're allowing the right 
uh, traffic, the port numbers in your security groups and your NACLs, you'll need to see if your subnet has been configured properly, whether it's a public subnet or a private subnet. Uh, you'll also need to check whether your route tables have been defined properly, if you're uh, routing your traffic properly to the right subnets or not. Uh, in addition to that, you can also um, um, make use of these flow logs, VPC flow logs, which enables you to capture and analyze your network traffic. So uh, when you go to your VPCs, you have the option of creating this flow log. Now, once you do this, it will start capturing all of your traffic, that the, your inbound traffic that is coming to your VPC. And this will help you in identifying issues that might be related to communication between your VPCs um, or with your external resources. So these are some of the options that you have which you can use to troubleshoot your uh, connectivity issues that you might be having with your VPC. So that's about all the uh, questions I have. So that's a quick tour uh, through some common AWS VPC interview questions that you can uh, expect. Now, remember, understanding these concepts is not just about acing your interviews. It's also about mastering the architecture that powers your uh, cloud infrastructure. Now, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more AWS content and uh, don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay in the loop. Uh, if you have any specific AWS topics that you would like me to explore next, drop your suggestions in the comments. Until next time, happy learning.